inhabit the praises of your people. So you're here with us right now. We thank you. We thank you. Start locally. God does not want it to end. For your to rescue this woman and her future came from her house. And the question is pertinent, it's very important. What do you have in the house? The man said, look at our, our response. Your servant has nothing. Is that true? So it is not everybody that says they have nothing that really has nothing. Are you listening? That's the way she said it. Your servant has nothing. And that has been the major problem she had had all along. Maybe before the husband died, that's exactly the problem they have had all along. The reason why they were in debt is because they thought they had nothing. And as long as you think you have nothing, the devil capitalizes on that and makes you feel like nothing. Are you listening to this? There are so many people who say, I have nothing. There is nothing I can contribute. There is nothing I can do. I am so weak. I am so poor. But that is not true. If only you can listen to that question again, what is in your house? And you are going to, before you speak, you are going to think deeply and think about the thing that God has placed in your house before now. Because the truth of the matter is, before every battle you will face in life, God is a million steps ahead of the devil. God has placed in her house what she needed to be free from death before she went into death. Because she had always had the oil. She said, your servant has nothing except... And that exception is the thing God is looking at. Mm. That thing you almost ignored. That thing you are not using. That thing you think you do not have. That thing you think is insignificant. That thing you think doesn't amount to anything. That is exactly what God's eye is on. And I see a pattern in scripture. It is the thing that men ignore most. That God recognizes most. Mm. Let me give you an example. God asked the same question to God asked the same question from Moses and said, what's in your hand? A rod. To throw it down. What's in your hand? Another situation is the time Jesus was going to feed the 5,000, he said, what do you have? Let's give people, these people food to eat. And somebody came and said, we have, there's a little boy here that has two fish and five loaves. But what is that among so many? It looks so insignificant. But was that the thing that did the miracle? Was that not the thing that did the miracle? Talk to me. Yes. And you say, the things you ignore the most is what I want to call your attention to today. It's so hard to find. It's so hard to tell. You would have come to a conclusion you have nothing, even though you have it. Those are the things that God wants to use to bless you and bless your future. To bless you and bless the future generation. She said, your servant has nothing except... So what do you think you do not have? What is that thing you think is insignificant? Can you sing and you think that is nothing? Can you pray and you think that is nothing? Are you, are you relatable? Are you, are, you, are, you, are you personable and you think that is not important? Do you have a gift that you, 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 you can relate to people easily and you think that is not important? Do you have a gift that you have so many friends and you don't know it's a value to your life? Do you have an ability to smile and make people feel comfortable around you and you think that is insignificant? Do you have certain things you even consider them weakness but you don't know that it is a strength in these guys? Some things people tell you because people have told you that that is a bad idea, that's a bad attitude, you don't know that God can use that to turn your life around. You don't know it because people have told you over and over again that that is a weakness. But you know there are so many weaknesses that God can turn to strength. Amen. Amen. You have to look deep within. The woman said, your servant had nothing. And then she looked within and said, except a jar of oil. Verse 3, then he said, go outside. Borrow vessels from all your neighbors. Empty vessels and not too few. So Elijah, Elisha told her, go outside. Go and borrow vessels. See, the miracle is about to happen. Once she mentioned the oil, Elisha was confident. That is all we need. That is all we need. That is what we need. And she, he said, go and borrow vessels. Do you know the pain it takes to go borrow vessels? <laughs> yeah. 
God help you. I've not talked to the neighbors in a long time. <laughs> it's a hassle. And I uh, need them. <laughs> Nobody is an island on their own. When I look at that, when he said go and borrow vessels, he had she had to take the pain to go and borrow vessels. Can I can I please borrow your vessel? And he said, don't borrow too few. And as a matter of fact, the amount she borrowed was going to demand.